Welcome to the Business and People Podcast. I'm your host, Walt Bayless, and in today's episode, we talk with personal development legend, Mark Ling, about his journey, starting from a very disruptive childhood and how he's been able to piece together an enterprise and businesses worth millions of dollars, and as well as that, help so many people along the way by creating their own life's journey, changing their habits, and making sure that their life is by design. We go through lots of different topics with Mark, but what we specifically concentrate on is building those small blocks to create something amazing for your own life's story. Enjoy this interview with Mark Ling on the Business and People podcast. Mark Ling, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me here. Oh, it's really great to have you with us, man. So as I mentioned in the introduction, one of the, the things that is really a standout for you is that dream life mastering with, uh, is it Dr. Stephen Jones? How did that all come to be? How did you get from from leaving school to being part of that whole personal development space? Well, when I was 16 years old, I first got into personal development because of a friend of my father's who was a real estate millionaire. He gave me a series of tapes on a topic called mind power. And then after that, I got into um, self-hypnosis. I ended up finding this book called, I think it was called Passion, Profit and Power by Marshall Silver. And I ended up writing out these self-hypnosis tracks and recording them on tapes and listening back through my ears um, and gained a lot of, just changed my life. A lot of this stuff changed my life um, for the better, changed the trajectory I was on because I, when my parents split up when I was six years old, I went and lived with my, my mum and she had schizophrenia but we didn't know it was undiagnosed so wow. as a result I had a mum who was uh, writing all sorts of weird stuff on the walls not really demonstrating much social skills I found it hard to um, tough time of it at school and stuff like that from yeah. other kids and you know because it took a while for me to just get stuff because I was not demonstrated at home and didn't even have you know siblings and stuff like that to chat with or anything it was difficult and I only got to see dad on Saturdays until I was 13 when I ended up having the school counselor pull me aside and said hey there's something wrong with your, your mum we need to talk about this and then I ended up moving in with dad which was great things went a lot better um, but I had to self-teach myself a lot of stuff and I certainly had some mindset issues that I didn't know I had until I started learning this stuff so wow. I'm a personal development junkie since the age of 16 I, I first started my journey then and have devoured all sorts of stuff. After that, I went in and learned a lot of stuff about the mind and how it works. So Edward de Bono stuff and other people's stuff like how to learn, how to wow. reprogram your mind to take on different belief systems. And uh, by the end of high school, I had a lot of good friends. Um, you know, people wouldn't recognize me from the first year of high school in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was doing, doing well in school and had... Um, I'm still friends with a lot of these these kids from back then and um, ended up managing to, even, even where I had areas of weakness, managed to get a lot of strengths from those areas from thanks to being able to change things with the mindset and being able to have a lot of uh, success in um, wealth and health and sports and stuff and, wow. um, and relationships Wow. and stuff like that as well like in all sorts of areas and, and and with making friends and stuff i'm not saying like i'm a perfect specimen by any stretch of the imagination that's not what it's about it's just like just being able to get the most out of who i am and being able to realize that even just being able to realize that it's okay like yeah, yeah, who you absolutely. are even if you stutter and stammer and you're not quite you know i am like tiny bit awkward compared to the average person in some ways. But then again, a lot of people like it about me as well. And they find that that makes people less nervous to be around me anyway. They realize that you're, that you're a human being as well. Mate, I, I think yeah. like the, the most of the people who will be listening to, to this particular podcast or watching it on the video will be in that kind of entrepreneurial space. So they'll recognize that connection with personal development material. And, and I loved what you said there about being self-taught because I, I feel that, um, until in this space, in the, in the space where people are looking to achieve, they're looking to design their own lives. It, it, it always seems to be that pivotal point where somebody puts a piece of material in your hand that kind of rockets everybody's trajectory moving forward. It, it, do you feel that as well? Um, 
Yeah, yes and no. I mean, for me, I mean, I was self-taught in a lot of ways. I had one opportunity because I saw a friend of mine was doing something and asked him if it was all right if I had a go at it. And then I didn't actually do anybody's training program or anything until I was already, I'd already made over a million dollars on the internet before I actually went ahead and spent a dime on someone else's program. Okay. However, when I did follow someone else's plan, I managed to double my weekly income within 90 days because I filled in a whole lot of holes that I didn't know I had because I nice. thought these make money online training programs, they're all, they're all a scam. Surely that doesn't, doesn't sound right. Why would someone teach what's working for them? Well, I ended up spending a thousand dollars on someone's program and it made a lot of money for me. And then I ended up spending another 30,000 over the next 24 months on other people's programs and skyrocketed my business. Now I'm not saying that everyone can spend all of that much on different people's programs, but I am saying that investing in yourself does count, but I'm not saying, but I'm also saying that you don't necessarily have to have been, it doesn't always start like you're saying with a spark where someone's handed you a plan yeah. and now you're implementing it. Sometimes it does. It does for a lot of people, but not for everyone. And in my case, it was more, I saw that someone else could do it. And I've always got every belief that I'm a human being too. Yeah. You know, we're all human beings. If you can do it, I can do it. If someone else can do something, I, I strongly believe that. Um, if someone can from my age bracket and my age group and with the, what I have, you know, it's a bit different if let's say I'm 40 and someone perhaps, uh, I don't know, someone that's 25 makes it into the New York Yankees baseball team. Well, no matter how hard I try, I don't necessarily believe I could do that. But if I see a 40 year old picking up baseball for the first time and they happen to get to a pretty good level by the time they're 50, I'd probably look at that and go, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So long as, so long as it's been proven that it can be done, then there's no reason why anybody else coming behind can't do the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've got to stop making excuses for yourself or anything like that. That's just programming in your brain. That's trying to protect you. Yeah. But we're, we are all human beings. We, there's been a lot of scientific research that shows we all have the same ability to learn and we all have the ability to grow our intelligence and actually get smarter. Um, and I've seen a lot of people achieve a lot of success as entrepreneurs at every age bracket, including 60 plus 70 plus, I've seen people start their first business at any age bracket, and, even and as, even even as low even as young as thirteen years old. So yeah, right, absolutely. We watch those the whiz the whiz kids with thirteen year olds uh, releasing apps and that kind of stuff, and just maxing it out on YouTube as a you know as an influencer and that kind of stuff is amazing. I know, and they're not necessarily whiz kids. They're, I mean, just because they're a kid and they're making money, you think whiz kid. You talk to them; they're just as smart as a lot of other kids. Yeah. They just happen to had pushed through and gone to the next step and the next step and just carried on. It's that bit more belief, I think, is a lot of it. You, you sit them down in an IQ test and they might be the same as every other kid in their class or in the average. It's not always necessarily the smartest. Sometimes they are, but not always. Yeah. So Actually, you know, Mark, talking to, thinking about the message for kids is something that I'm really passionate about. If you had an opportunity to stand on stage, which I know you've done a lot around the world, but if you had a chance to stand on stage to a, a, a group full of graduating students these are kids that have maybe been through university or, or college they're standing there with, with you know with the board on top and the, and the degree under the arm what sort of advice would you give that room full of kids who are just about to come into what we call the real world um, armed with their experience so far what would you deliver to them well, to help what, them are, what are you saying that I'm trying to teach them though because um, if they've just graduated university then I'm not necessarily talking to them about starting a business Sure. So I might talk differently. Uh, I would probably, about, you know, designing yeah. a life, I guess. And designing a life that you love. Yeah. I would absolutely, um, I would absolutely talk a lot, I guess, about making sure that you don't, uh, I, I would probably start by letting people know, like it's, it's quite interesting, but 90% of what you think, Every thought that you have is the same thoughts you had yesterday. There's a lot of research on this. 90% of the same thoughts. 95% of the thoughts that you think every day are your subconscious thoughts. You don't even notice they're going on. They're just subconscious, right? And of the conscious thoughts that you're thinking, 95% of them are repetitive. They are tapes that you just play that you didn't necessarily insert in there and choose. I'm going to think about blah. 
right now. It's just thought, habit, stimulus, cue, response, and you do this, right? So a lot of our lives are lived mindlessly. Mm. So that's okay though, because our brains can't handle living just everything in the conscious mind. It's just too much for us to process, right? But it does tell us though, that there are a lot of successful people out there that have become huge successes, all thanks to what they have been able to do with their habits. Right. So if you want to create a life that you really, really love, it is important that you really get to do two things. One is you develop a, a growth oriented mindset. So that's one whereby you realize that anything can be learned. You can learn anything and, the, and you're not aiming for results. You will get more wins out of enjoying the process of learning than you will out of only enjoying the winning and then avoiding what you're not good at. Right. Right. Because you lose, let's say, let's say I want to get better at squash and I lose a squash match. I will get better by playing those people better than me and losing 10 in a row to people better than me. I'll go back to my own grade. I'll be beating everyone. That's better than going, Oh, they're too good for me. I better avoid them and only play people that I'm better than. And I, you're not going to start beating. You're not going to get better. You know, right. and it's the same as in life and, and anything else. So that growth oriented mindset where you're actually loving learning and you're really looking for opportunities where things are hard, but it means you'll make more failures. And if you fail, more you'll actually have more success so if you can learn to actually enjoy that you'll go a long way in any career any career whatever i don't care if you're a doctor a lawyer an accountant um uh, whatever it, it might be if you can learn to challenge yourself more and enjoy the challenges and enjoy that's the reward not the not the once a year where you might win a tournament or something or win some prize it's that the journey if you can learn to enjoy that as the reward you're going to go a long way in life and you're going to have so much success so growth oriented mindset and then the second thing is um, making sure that you periodically just look at your habits and um look at any habits that you want to change because if if 90 percent of your life is all done on autopilot then it pays to have a quick look at what your autopilot things are like if you suddenly notice that you're having five cups of coffee a day and you want to change that and make that into one or two Maybe have a look. What happens? Well, what happens at 3.30 in the afternoon? Oh, I'm feeling bored. When I get bored, I get up and I walk over and I have a coffee and I sit down. Do I need that one at that time? Could I swap that out for something else? You know, so then you, you start to look at that and you go, right, 3.30, I'm bored. I get up, I go and I have an apple. And I talk to a couple of colleagues outside and then I walk back and I sit at my desk. Does that work? If I do that for 10 days in a row, does that satisfy things? I'm um, great. I've removed a cup of coffee. Nice. Um, your habits matter. And in order to become a successful entrepreneur, I've had to change habits myself in order to make sure that um, there's enough time each day is actually spent on getting better, learning more and growing a business. Uh, otherwise it's very easy for the average person to never even be able to, find free time to get better at stuff because they're watching TV for four hours a day. For sure. How do you change that habit? Do you have a process? Do you have a system for changing a habit personally? Personally? Well, there's, there's a few things like for me, one of the easiest ways is um, affirmations. Yep. So you basically, you say the same statement out loud over and over again for five minutes every day. Yep. 90 days in a row and that can just totally burn an entire thought process into your head so you instinctively that's just how you think and any negative or different kind of thought is is gone right um there's a really really good book by charles duig on the power of habit yep um right here um, nice. I, I highly recommend it to people that um if they want to know more about how habits are formed and for me, it is more a matter of just having a look what that habit is, what the uh, when it happens, so your cue, whatever like time often is the cue, or it might be something else like a stimulus. Yep. So when it happens, what you actually do, and then so what your routine is, what you do, and then what's the reward that you get at the end of it. So if you can look at those three things and you can change one of those things, like 
changed either your reward or your, uh, quite often it's just that routine, the habit that you're trying to get out of there, but you, you know that cue is still going to be there. So you, you change the habit for something else. And sometimes you can keep that same reward or a similar type reward. Then that can be all the difference. Um, right making it happen. Uh, sometimes it can be as simple as saying, um, all right, I want my kids to have the habit of getting all of their chores done when they get home from school. So they need a bit of a reward though, because they used to just get home and just want to, I don't know, just want to jump on some computer games or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. How can it be more fun to uh, put, get your lunchbox out of your lunch bag and get your homework done and all of that sort of stuff. How can that be more fun? Well, we just, okay, well, we add it to a chore chart. They just simply, they get home, they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this, and then bam, they get some praise from dad and they get um, a tick on a tick chart towards some reward that comes up later and then they can carry on with their day and it just becomes a habit. So, so I don't know that. if that's an explanation, but- No, it, it uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And changing that, I like the idea of changing the routine, but keeping the same reward. So if they get, and, and you're keeping that same example, if, if their reward is that time on the computer games or whatever, then, then the reward can still be in place, but so long as the, the achievement is done in a, in a way. And, and if we take that to an entrepreneur, if the reward, like we said, of, of having a cup of coffee or you know, sleeping in in the morning, whatever, whatever it is that the reward is, you know, it might be a time away, it might be a holiday with the family, whatever the reward is, so long as we can change the the method of getting there to to actually help it be more constructive in the process yeah 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 absolutely absolutely i mean sometimes it's though things are needed like like i say like sometimes you just need to do something like affirmations to really burn it in your brain or listen yep. to a self-hypnosis track on a topic or sometimes it's a matter of just uh, using a little bit of willpower yep. but the less you need to use willpower, the better, because willpower, that's a chemical in your brain. You've only got so much of it. You can build it up to be a bit stronger each day with a little bit of discipline. But at the end of the day, the less willpower you have to use, the better and the more you can just make something into an automatic habit that is just part of your daily routine, like brushing your teeth, yeah. the better. Um, mentioning brushing your teeth, by the way, from a point of view of a business perspective, yeah. um, Back in the 1900s, um, people didn't use to brush their teeth every day. And even dentists didn't recommend brushing their teeth every day because they didn't even do it every day. In fact, they thought that it was all right to just have an apple in the morning and a carrot at night, that kind of thing. Yeah. But this thin layer of film that's over your mouth when you wake up and even quite often builds up during the day by the time you go to bed. And Claude Hopkins, one of the greatest marketers of all time, he was marketing toothpaste and he decided that he's going to try this Q habit reward system, like make it so that people automatically, they think that they need the toothpaste to, well, it, it, they know that toothpaste will kill plaque and all of that, but all of those arguments never sold toothpaste. Toothpaste was not selling well. But when they said that it gets rid of that, um, the morning breath and that you absolutely need to do it before you, uh, the first thing when you get out of bed, um, to get rid of that, that film over your mouth, all of that sort of stuff, all of a sudden it became a global phenomenon because he was able to make it so that everybody feels uncomfortable. They've got this cue, I've got bad breath, habit, I go brush my teeth, reward, it, that funny film over my mouth's gone. You know, there, there are many ways to get rid of that film over your mouth, but now everyone's used to feeling minty in the morning. They're used to that little tiny reward system. Um, you know, I just thought I'd just mention from a no, business. No, it's fascinating. Like, I'm just thinking that like, in terms of, you know, business people who are listening or entrepreneurs who are listening can look at that and think about the simplest things in their life that might be destructive and how they can change that routine around it. I love it. Mate, going backwards for you then, if, if we look at, you know, you've done a lot of work, as we mentioned, uh, with Dr. Steve G. Jones and with Heather Matthews as yep. well with the Manifestation Miracle. Knowing what yep. you know now, knowing mm -hmm. what you know now, having been through the education that you've been through, what would you mm -hmm. do differently uh, you know, going back to that 16 year old boy, as we, as we mentioned before, what, what would you do as a much different process now that you know what you know? What would I do? Um, as far as what, like in terms of uh, making money in terms of, cause I don't know if I'd change a lot because uh, then I might not have met the people that I met and I may not be where I am. And I, I still feel like I've got 
life is just right. Like it's not, it's, I'm very, very happy with the children that I have, the, the, the wife I have, the, the life I have. I know that I've got challenges and, you know, things go up and down, but I'm grateful for those, what those challenges are. I, I look and I say the quality of, everyone's got problems. Everyone's got stresses. Sometimes your stress goes through the roof and sometimes it's back to normal, but the quality of those stresses, you want them to be high quality ones, not like I'm stressed because I, um, I am 50 pounds overweight and I'm worried about getting diabetes or something or my wife just died or something, you know, I'm glad that those are not my stresses. I'm very lucky. So sometimes, you know, having a little bit of perspective helps. If I was talking to somebody else who has not lived the life yet though, instead of my own self, because I'd, I'd probably just not tell myself anything and be like, I'm quite happy with what happened and just go with that. Um, if it was somebody else though, I would, I'm always about trying to make sure that people, um, they learn, they, they get out of any fixed mindset. Like you, you're not, you lose it or you use it. You're always learning. Learning is just a given. You have to keep learning in life and you may as well enjoy it. You may as well enjoy every moment of it because that's what life's about. The moment you stop using your brain and you stop learning and you stop being conscious of what's going on is the moment your brain atrophies just like any other muscle and you end up stuck and you will, your state, everything you've got in life will stay at the average of everybody else that you know. That's pretty much what happens. And so if you are one of those other types of people that is constantly learning and you don't have to be learning loads and loads, even five minutes a day of learning, just, just any gradual improvement each day can, you know, if you become 0.1 of a percent better each day, you're going to end up somewhere pretty amazing in the years to come. Is there a is there a conscious uh, routine that you have with that with that continual learning that continuous improvement? Do you have a a daily process that you go through? Not exactly. It's things just sort of I guess fit into fit into place because they're just my habits. So sure. I, I'd have to think about it. Um, but I do. I, I guess I do end up. I mean, I've got a bunch of books around. So I do end up like grabbing books and learning stuff all the time. Um, um, but I have a habit tracker that I put together at the all the people that dream life mastery go through this, that are uh, part of that. But we, uh, every day write down the things that we're working on over the next 60 days, habits we'd like to instill in the mind habits would, uh, what the top goal is and what some other little milestone goals are as well. And, um, things that achieved yesterday, things we'd like to achieve today, just one thing because anything more than one thing in a day is a bonus. Yeah, nice. Um, and then, uh, and we write the extra things, but they're just seen as a bonus. And then, um, and then what we're going to do for physical activity, and what and and the what you want to achieve today is separated by personal and business, and all of that's filled out and it takes five minutes. It takes maybe ten when people are not used to it, but it takes about five once people are used to filling it out. And then it sets off your day every day, I guess, naturally for a process of um, improvement. Do you, is there a way that I think that, that um, access to Dream Life Mastery is something that a lot of people would, would benefit from? Is there a, is there somewhere they can go to get a, a, a involved in that? Yeah, if they want to know more more about it, either the program or they want to jump on one of the free master classes or something like that, uh, they can check out dreamlifeprogram.com. Okay. Great. Well, that's that's a good one. I'll put make sure we put that in the notes as well, so people can can tap into it and start to change their own habits to uh, to design that life as we as we talked about, which would be really really cool. Mark, I've got a sixty second challenge which I love to to ask our guests, and it's really um, focused around a, a business growth kind of thing. So the the premise of the challenge is you've, you catch up with a friend who you haven't seen for a long time, and this is somebody that uh, you, you know you've lost contact with. They've been an employee, and now they've just decided to start their own venture, they've taken the leap, they've got their own business, and you're catching up with them right at that time. And they turn to you and say, Mark, you've been incredibly successful. What advice could you give me to help me on my journey in 60 seconds or less? And they've already got a business? Yeah, they've just started it. I would say that everything about business is all focused on leads, conversions, and average dollars per sale, average number of sales per customer, those four things. Everything else is shiny object syndrome. So anything you can do, if you want to multiply your business, anything you can do to bring more people in, 
like running ads and testing and measuring that, anything you can do to convert more sales to the people that do come in. So testing out the offers that you've got inside your business, uh, anything you can do to increase the average dollars per sale, uh, maybe in testing your prices and anything you can do to make sure that they keep coming back over and over again multiplying those areas just a little bit by little bit is going to lead to massive success. And then once you've got that in a, into a system, then it's about replicating that system over and over, whether that's through franchising your business or through investing even more into what you've already got. It's in order to automate things so that you can be at home a bit more rather than you having to be in it while it's in use. I love it. I think, uh, you know, I've asked that question of a lot of people with the interview and, and we, we get a lot of different answers, but I think, uh, that one, concentrating on leads, concentrating on the dollars per sale, concentrating on the conversion rates and, and bringing people back is the, is the master skill of any business growth. And, and I think with that um, concentration on those four points, I think that's, that's pretty sound advice. Mate, talking, talking of advice, you're, you mentioned that you're, you're happy with the way life has worked out for you. You have uh, an incredible uh, satisfaction with what you've achieved and the lessons that you've, you've got to where you are. Keeping that projection moving forward, and let's let's move, you know, twenty years in the future, and now you've got that same happiness and perfect life moving forward. Let's say that we had an opportunity to catch up with yourself twenty years from now. What advice do you think Mark Ling twenty years from now would give to you to make that journey as as enjoyable as the the it has been up until now? I honestly don't know because I'm not there. That's hard to know what advice. I hope that Mark Ling in the future would say, keep doing what you're doing and <laughs> that you're on the right track. That would be uh, what I'd hope, hope to think. Good. I definitely know that I'm doing the best that I can with what I know and that what I don't know, I'm learning from making dumb mistakes, right. you know, make mistakes over and over. I would probably make too many, but then again, I, at least I learn from them. And that's, I guess all you can ask from yourself. Yeah. Um, sure. Got to not be broken though by, um, any failures, some failures, some people, you know, some things you, you can let your pride get in the way. And, um, at the end of the day, no, none of us are more important than anyone else. None of us are less important than anyone else. So uh, you've got to be able to uh, accept that about yourself. Things aren't always going to be perfect, but the more that you're willing to actually make those mistakes also the more successes you'll have so anyway that's off topic but with your with regards to your question what would what would they say I, I hope that they just say to enjoy every moment because it I mean that's what I'd say to myself from 20 years ago the time does go quite quickly so you may as well just sap in every moment of enjoyment that you got out of each day nice I love it what, what what's some of the goals that you're working on at the moment Mark what do you work what's your project where will we see you on the horizon well, I've got lots of things, I guess, that I'm working on. But in the next 60 days, uh, where's my habit tracker? Have I even got it near me? No, I don't have it. Oh, yeah, it's in, my, it's in my bag over there. But um, definitely one of the things I've got is I just want to have a lot more staff training videos. That's my number one over the next 60 days because the more videos I make for the staff, the less pressure there is on me for people to keep asking questions about certain things and the less I have to be the one to do certain things. Okay. So it takes me out of certain, uh, it, it, it helps fix certain issues. Makes, But anyway, that's uh, one of my targets uh, in sport. I'm aiming, I've got a little small target when I'm playing squash. It's not so much about the results because I'm winning some matches lately. It's more about um, I want to have all my backhands that I play down the line, not hitting the side wall. And uh, I want to be able to hit um, 50 on each side, backhand, forehand, without the ball touching the side wall, you know, on the full, just be able to do it, you know, as a routine um, consistently. I know these are probably like totally off topic for what the readers are interested in, but no, it's I've great. Got a little, I've just, I just set myself little targets, they're 60 day targets and I just keep on working away at them and, and then you know, I'll set something else. It's all the targets are usually process driven. I might know what my three year goal is, but you never, I never sort of end up aiming at the free three year goal. It just sort of gets there. It's more that I'm aiming at the, well, what's one little thing along the way. Like I want to go up to next grade in the squash. So what are some of the things that would help me get there? Well, one of them is having 
you know, when I'm really tired in the middle of a match and I go and play a shot, it still goes exactly where I want it to. That would really help. So how do I make that happen? Okay, well, one of the things is the volley, those ones on the full, that you really got to attack them rather than, you know, give the opponent time to take a breath while it bounces. Like, you know, so I, I, I thought that through and thought, okay, one little thing I could do is just get better at that. You know, so that's my little habit there. I'll probably set something else for squash in 60 days from now. Um, same thing goes for, for business. I thought, well, what's something that's really going to help? It's going to help a lot if the training is better within our team. So I thought, right, I want to have a, a lot of, there's a, several things that I get bottlenecked on in business that I need other people to be empowered to be able to do. And, uh, you know, that involves creating training in some okay. cases, sometimes software. So that's I, love, I, I love it. I think like for, for everyone that's listening and, and I'm, again, I'm so appreciative of your time, so I won't take up too much more of it. But I, for everyone that's listening, I love the, the, the thought that you're, you're looking at a, a goal, a big goal down the track of something that you want to achieve, but it's not necessarily about heading directly for that. It's about doing the small little tasks in a, in a way that forms a habit successfully along the way to achieving that bigger goal. And, and we talk about life by design. That's really how that design comes to pass, isn't it? Like design yeah. is those little steps. If, if you think about university for a moment, people have to take, let's say, it's different at different universities, but let's say stage one, level 101 papers, say at university, you might have to take, say, 12 of those. And then at the next stage, you might have to, and you could, you could do those over one year or two years or whatever. And then the next stage, you might have to take six of these papers. And then at the top level, you might have to take anywhere from two to four of those. And then the next level, one or two of those. And then that's your degree and you get your degree, right? Right. Well, when it comes to achieving success in something, like becoming a millionaire or whatever, this probably is the equivalent of those little things. So you're just aiming at, bam, and trying to be the guy that wins lotto. That's... Yeah. That's tough and it's daunting, but just looking at it going, okay, there's the triangle. I'm filling it in. I'm, I'm doing this. And I know that one way or another, yeah, I might get lucky and get the whole thing given all at once in one year, or I may end up being like the standard person that just plods the long, gets all the stuff done. Next thing you know, oh, triangle's filled in. Took, took a bit longer than I thought, but at least I'm there. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, and again, Mark, thank you so much. I, I love the, the idea that people can piece that puzzle together for themselves. And the, the size of those puzzle pieces are dependent upon everybody's circumstances. So they can really build and what their goal is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what they're heading towards in the end. I love the idea of working back from it. Again, Mark, thanks so much. I, I'm con huge congratulations for everything that you've achieved and, and the lives that you've been able to yes. impact along the way. Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to uh, have had the introduction that we've had. And of course, if people wanted to get hold of you and, and start to design their own life, one of the uh, great ways they can do that is through that Dream Life Mastery Program, which is dreamlifeprogram.com. And again, Mark, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it, man. And all the best. And, for uh, I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate your time as well. I'll just let people know though, my face might not be on that website. Uh, I may add it. I'm not sure. Dr. Steve G. Jones is in there. I'm absolutely, I'm in the members area and I'm in the members community as well. Yeah. But quite often I like to, sometimes I put my face on programs, but quite often I like to have somebody else be, um, be the head face of, face of things so that I'm not quite so in the responsible state of having to be there. But in, in the end, I end up being there anyway because I'm quite passionate about that particular program. But I just thought I'd just let people know in case they're wondering, hey, this is Mark Ling, but then who's Dr. Steve? Or Got it. I, when, it was, when we were doing research to, uh, to jump on with you, I actually said to you, Mark, there's so little about you. And yet you've been recommended to me as someone amazing in that space. And uh, it was great for me to be able to understand that a lot of the incredible things that you've created with Dr. Stephen Jones and, you know, with Heather Matthews as well, with that manifestation miracle have been all part of your world and, and letting other people um, yeah. be the face. There's several of other products like language learning, dog training, you name it. Yeah, Different. right. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the path of being a, an information product entrepreneur, I guess. So you, you get the right experts in place, you put together great systems, and you can produce some pretty, you know, pretty exciting products. Very cool. Very cool. Mark, thanks again so much for your time. I really appreciate the message and uh, all the best for the future, man. Well, really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Cheers.